before we start. Do we have any questions before we commence? Seeing none. Okay, at this time I'll call the first witness uh, to the table, the Wellington Place Neighborhood Association. I think it's Mr. Ken Greenberg. Welcome, Mr. Greenberg. Uh, as you know, we have 15 minutes for your presentation. And, uh, and then, as you heard, the first series of questions, if there's any time within your 15 minutes, it will be the official opposition party. Can you please identify yourself for the record, and you can commence. Thank you. Ken Greenberg. Yes. I'm an architect, urban designer, and president of the Wellington Place Neighborhood Association. Uh, Madam Chair, members of the committee, thank you very much for the opportunity to appear here this morning. Um, I come wearing two hats, uh, representing the Wellington Place Neighborhood Association, uh, but also as a professional in the field, having worked for 10 years as Director of Architecture and Urban Design for the City of Toronto under three mayors, and for 26 years practicing internationally on planning and design matters. Um, my submission, uh, and I believe you will all have copies of the submission that I'm working from this morning um, is that the Ontario Municipal Board is basically the wrong tool for the job. What we're doing is using a hammer to turn screws. Um, it is a deeply flawed institution and it is poorly suited for the role that it has come to play in a large city like Toronto. Um, almost uniquely among jurisdictions, the province of Ontario has adopted the model of a quasi-judicial tribunal called the OMB for the adjudication and oversight of planning matters. Uh, the board's decisions are final. Its role, as I'm sure you're well aware, has always been highly controversial given its undemocratic authority to overrule legally elected municipal councils and increasingly substitute its own decisions for municipal ones. In fact, what has happened in recent years is that the OMB has become the de facto planning board for Toronto, and it is fundamentally unsuited for this role. A judicial tribunal is exactly the wrong kind of model. It's loosely modeled on a court, but without actual trained judges, or any basis in common law. It uses an adversarial form of interrogation, examination, cross-examination. It's binary, it's reductive. Whatever the merits of this system in criminal courts or in civil cases, it's exactly the wrong way to have discussions about city building with many complex interrelated variables. Because it looks at each development proposal on a one-off basis in this adversarial environment, it cannot consider the cumulative effects of multiple developments in an area on decision-making or how they impact each other. What we need, in fact, is something different. We need a multi-party, free-ranging discussion. We need to build solutions and develop consensus among parties and we need a wide and deep understanding of the issues and the places in question. It's not surprising that a veritable cottage industry has emerged around this phenomenon of the OMB, including a type of lawyer that doesn't exist in any other jurisdiction, who never practices in front of a real court. Uh, we have professional witnesses and handlers who do nothing but appear at the OMB, uh, and this system has actually severely distorted the planning process. Smart developers often choose their development teams based on an assumption that they will go to the OMB, so they start with lawyers, and then they end up choosing designers for their projects based on their, not their skill in their profession, but their ability to appear as witnesses. Um, in terms of the city, an enormous amount of resources are diverted into appearing and preparing for OMB hearings. Uh, a former colleague of mine, chief planner, estimated, and this was a few years ago, that his staff was spending 14,000 hours annually, 2,000 person days, just preparing for OMB hearings. What this does is it leaves diminished resources for integrated long-range planning, social planning, neighborhood and community planning, 
which is what planning staffs in other cities actually spend their time doing. Uh, to make it worse, what happens is because city officials and elected uh, politicians know that their decisions are likely to be countermanded by the OMB, they don't take their roles seriously. This is producing in communities uh, a high level of uncertainty, cynicism, and alienation, which I know you hear a great deal about. The problem is with this tribunal model, the only way to express concerns about a development is to engage in highly technocratic discussions over quantifiable measures of height and density. And what this does is it puts people on the defensive. It doesn't allow them to talk about the things that really interest them. So I want you to put this in perspective, knowing that no, nowhere else in the world, nowhere in the 50 states, nowhere in the remaining provinces of Canada, is there any comparable model. And this is, has become a symbol of the immaturity of a great city like Toronto. It produces highly inequitable treatment based on access to expensive lawyers. And in this litigious atmosphere of the OMB, the wrong issues get discussed. For people who want to talk about qualitative issues, how development affects their neighborhood, how it is shaped, how it integrates with the existing neighborhood, it's not possible to do that. The only things that people are allowed to talk about are very esoteric discussions of a kind of pseudo-scientific numerology related to planning. So how is this done in other cities? In other cities, two things happen. One is the real decisions are vested with the people who are democratically elected. They often have recourse to arm's length bodies like planning commissions and planning boards. Uh, there is a great benefit in doing this because it removes uh, this kind of discussion from the political fray. These bodies typically have a variety of people on them who have real expertise, architects, landscape architects, planners, urban designers, community people, people in the real estate industry who know the subject, who know the places intimately. They're not parachuted in from other cities or other jurisdictions. It's typically a multi-step process. There are no lawyers present. People are allowed to talk freely. There's no such thing as cross-examination. Uh, people being humiliated and intimidated by lawyers. And through a multi-step discussion, good solutions emerge. So the argument is made still uh, by people who, who somehow favor the presence of the OMB in Toronto that um, as bad as it is, it's preferable to allowing the dysfunctional city of Toronto take over. And my counter argument to that is this, this is the moment to break the vicious cycle that fundamentally this litigious and constrained adversarial dialogue implicit in the tribunal model, which the OMB uniquely among jurisdictions has adopted for planning matters, produces the antithesis of the kind of qualitative, multi-party, informal dialogue that's essential to produce best practices in city building and should be done away with in favor of any number of more productive models that one can find around the world. In conclusion, I would say that if we were talking about healthcare this morning, what we have is a system with very little work on public health or prevention and an almost total reliance on the emergency room. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Greenberg. Just for the committee's sake, uh, the clerk just told me that uh, Mr. Greenberg submitted his written submission. We will be receiving the copy this afternoon. Okay, I just want everybody to know on record. So this round of question, Mr. Greenberg, is from the op uh, opposition party. Who will start? Mr. McDonnell? Yeah. Thank you. <coughs> five um, minutes. You have five minutes. Sure. Five minutes? Yes. Um, thank you for your submission, and uh, I think that... Uh, Everybody's aware of the shortcomings or issues, there's issues with the OMB. Um, your choice is, without it, is, you know, to fight your battles out in court. Um, what are your feelings about that? Or have you had seen models that you would like to uh, um, have br bring back to us as an option? I served uh, for a year and a half as the chief planner in Boston. 
Boston has a Planning and Development Commission, uh, which is a kind of panel that I just described. Um, developers and their designers come to the panel and present their projects several times. The community is invited. There's a chair of the panel. There's a free discussion. Um, I hardly ever saw a lawyer in the room. It rare, the only time uh, anything ended up in court, in civil court, and this would be an extremely rare occurrence, were actual matters of civil law, contract disputes, uh, procedural issues, but this, this is like a, a one in 500 occurrence, and it, it actually this system functions extremely well um, I've appeared before such bodies in jurisdictions in Europe, in many of the United States and other Canadian provinces. I think what's happened is somehow people in Ontario have gotten used to this and have come to believe that something that is extremely unusual and dysfunctional is normal. It's not. Do you have any questions? Um, throughout your um, your issues, maybe uh, we don't have your brief in front of us, maybe just go over uh, the issue that brought you here today. Or um, I, I would imagine there's a neighborhood issue that's, uh, that's, that's shown you how this Well, what, it, it's not a single issue. I, uh, the Wellington Place neighborhood goes back to 1830. Um, it's one of the oldest neighborhoods in the city. It includes a cemetery where Lieutenant Governor Simcoe's daughter is buried, along with 500 other graves. Uh, it was the original um, burial ground for Fort York. Um, it is part of King Spadina, which is going through a phenomenal transformation along with King Parliament, uh, very intensive redevelopment. So our association and our neighboring associations have seen probably more applications come forward for redevelopment than almost any other jurisdiction or any other area in the province. So, and we have seen how the specter of the OMB, the performance of the OMB, uh, is profoundly disruptive and distorts um, a good and fruitful discussion around planning matters. So it's not, it's not a single issue, it's an accumulation of frustrations that the community has felt over many years. And working with the local councillors, what we have tried to do is informally, extrajudiciously, uh, whatever the word is, um, to create the kind of multi-party discussion that I've been describing. And when that occurs, it obviously allows the parties where there are differences to air those differences in a constructive way. So I'm, I'm utterly convinced of the merit of what I'm telling you. I also think that if, if we did not have the planning staff required to do all this preparation for OMB hearings, we would have one of the finest planning operations on the continent. We have, we have an extraordinary city with a, a great talent pool. We have many talented developers and everybody is being forced to go through this uh, phony court system uh, with people playing Perry Mason and, and acting in, in extremely um, strange ways to discuss issues that cannot be discussed effectively in this manner. Now, <clears throat> generally, you know, your official plans, your zoning uh, is in place. Is this an issue with going beyond those limits or that you've seen, or is it something, uh, just a disagreement within the bounds of what the, the official plans uh, are actually um, are theirs, you know, they're, they're put together and reviewed every uh, five, six years. Uh, well, as, as I'm sure you're aware, you know, going back to my day at the city under, I started under David Crombie, uh, at that time the OMB, uh, at least more, more, more so than as the case today, was looking at the official plan and looking at whether decisions complied with the official plan. As I'm sure you're aware, the OMB now feels perfectly free to make it up as it goes along and to totally ignore the official plan. So you get what are called minor variances where you will have heights that are 300% greater 
than what the bylaw allows or what the uh, kinds of densities that the official plan calls for, which are treated as minor variances. And, and this is entirely at the whim of members of the OMB who may be parachuted in from North Bay, who may never have stepped foot on the sidewalks where the development is occurring and who are really, really responding to which lawyer has the biggest pile of, of documents or the most expensive witnesses. So this, this, the reference to the OMB is completely gone to Thank the you, uh, official plan. Your time is up. Thank okay. you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> All right. The next witness is Pawa Jaynes. And this round of question will be coming from the NDP. Welcome. Welcome, Thank Mr. Jane. 